get into it. So Ty, let's let's have a bit of an intro from you um, and go over just a bit of a run over your over your career. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that that will be fine. Cheers, man. Um, so my name is uh, Ty or Newton, but everyone calls me Ty because uh, you uh, refer to people's last names in the military and Ty Posri just gets butchered. So Ty is, is what we get stuck with. Uh, enlisted in 2004, 14, all right, 2014. Uh, and I currently hold the rank of Sergeant in the Royal Australian Engineers. Uh, I, so that makes it an eight year SAR Sergeant, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty special let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, I'm posted to Harman uh, in Can Canberra, but I also take care of or assist with the recruitment uh, for the Canberra region and also any kind of admi administrative tasks within the RIC, the Regional Induction Company uh, for New South Wales, uh, which is at one point the largest, actually it was larger than the Tongan Army at one point in 2021. So uh, it's a very, very big, big push for, for, for reservists. We have a, a massive, uh, I guess, a gap of capability and we do some pretty cool, cool stuff as well, which we'll go into in a sec. Uh, but that's me in a nutshell. Uh, I'm, I'm the only reason why I'm here is because I totally believe in, in Brody's cause, uh, in, in actually elevating those, especially in the defense force around us and actually succeeding. Uh, so uh, ask me anything whatsoever about anything from fitness to, to life in the reserves, a bit in full time as well, because uh, I have integrated with your trips, any kind of tasks that, that we do in the reserve space as well. Um, so yeah, that's about me. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, you've got shitloads of uh, stuff that people would be really interesting in, interested in and yeah, a lot of knowledge in, in that side of things as well, because yeah, I, I run it like there's a lot of reservists going through at the moment that I'm finding. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's there's a fair bit of stuff, obviously, with the Rick and, and all of that sort of stuff. So um, before we go on, all you live participants, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions that pop into your head, just chuck them into the chat. And then um, I'll that way it'll be sort of in order and I'll be able to just go through and um, get used to, to ask them in person. So, um, and so you don't forget as well, because usually it just flies out of your head and you can't remember when it's time for questions. So yeah, first things first, you're talking about the RIC. So yeah, let, just have a bit of a um, overview of what the RIC actually is. Uh, yeah, and, and what you, you know, what your main role is with, with that side of things. Yeah, of course, of course, no, that's a good cool question. So if you are a reservist and you're uh, looking to join up within Australia itself, all right, so when you enlist and you you, you swear on, on the Bible or to the Queen, you then get uh, posted to the RIC or the Regional Induction Company. And they are, their sole role is to make sure that you get through Kapuka and get through any initial employment training uh, within six months. Understand that COVID has actually Im impacted that and there is some leniency there. However, the sole role of, of, of Rick is to remove the overhead from the regiments, the people who actually do the fighting and support and removing that responsibility and, and, and actually centralizing it. So we, we, we make sure that we standardize all of recruitment. There's a one point of contact and we enable people and, and the units to actually do what they do best and that's war fighting. Uh, so every single state has their own RIC. Uh, I'm part of, or I was part of the New South Wales one, uh, and I looked after my own depot as a corporal. Uh, and uh, our, our role is to make sure that you are administered uh, via your career, your courses, any admin, but probably most importantly, the, the soldierly qualities that we, uh, I guess, instill in all of our soldiers. Now, the RIC is only for reserve army right so if you're joining as a navy or an air, air, air force this doesn't apply to you uh, but uh, if you are joining in as an army reservist then you you'll meet the rick and essentially their main role is to make sure that your initial career is, is is set up for you to be then posted to your receiving unit yeah right so um yeah just to get a bit more clarification with that so you join you enlist as a reservist and then you're posted to the rick and then are you still a part of the RIC when you're going through training? Like you go to Kapuka, uh, what about when you march out? And cause this is all like, cause I was full time. Yeah, I don't really yeah. know much about it either. So um, yeah, it, like when, what point in time do you leave the RIC? Yeah, that's a good question. So we, so we separate the non-combat cause. Hello. Combat cause. Hello. Hello. Hang on, Josh. Hang on, I'll just right. get yourself there. I'll, I'll talk to you. <laughs> 
Always the one. It's all good. Uh, so when so when you in, unless you are uh, enrolled in into the rec, you then get separated by your your ECN or your employment category number. If you are a non-combat, then uh, once you pass Kapuka, you then get posted to your U unit. If you are a driver, once you get uh, once you do your driving courses, which is the uh, the mid, the heavy rigid. Uh, so when you can drive a a 40 mic which is a terrible truck don't record that uh <laughs> then then you then then you get posted to to your unit you know, if your combat corps which is our artillery cab the engineers or infantry once you do your combat arms which is your small section arms and and your weapons then you get posted to your unit so there's different tra trajectories depending yeah. on where where you are however you'll be part of the rick at least for the kapuka part and that's the most important part because when you come come back you feel a bit more accomplished and everything you can talk to your mates you can then pass the information down to people below you uh, and all the recruits that were in your position five five months ago uh, and actually uh, and, and and elevate them as well yeah yeah sweet yeah all right so um when you are a part of the rig um because obviously people get posted to units do those uh, like particular units have a rick cell or what, what happens with that? Do you have to go to like a different location for the RIC or yeah. like say, say people in Newcastle, like they, they're getting, they're going in as um, infantry and yeah. then they do Kapuka, but they're still a part of the RIC. Where are they parading after Kapuka? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So all of the university regiments within the actual state. So for example, I, I was attached to the University of New South Wales. So we have a centralized location in Kensington in the middle of the city. However, you have outlying depots such as Pimble, Holsworthy, and uh, Newcastle as well. Yeah. And this is uh, this is em emulated across this year to state. However, if you're part of an outlying depot such as Dubbo or some kind kind of, uh, I wouldn't say backwater, it's the wrong word, uh, rural area, uh, then we may have an agreement with the depot there, where whether if it's an, an infantry or a cab call sign uh, to to act on our behalf, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's managed by one unit, which is uh, the university unit of the state itself. Yeah, yeah, right, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and and you can pretty much just like say, yeah, you can take care of them just as long as they're doing this, that, and that. Exactly right. You know, they're not doing this yes. <laughs> pretty much. Right. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, sweet, because I did join as a, I joined as a reserve um, back in bloody 2005. And I joined as a mechanic uh, right off the bat. And we we sort of went through a little bit different stream to everyone else because we had the RTAP scheme oh, at yeah. that time. Yeah, it was an apprenticeship scheme. For the people who don't know, it doesn't, doesn't run anymore. So we didn't go through RIC or anything like that. We were sort of a, our own little thing. Um, that's why I have no, no idea about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, um, okay. Okay. Uh, just your role uh, we'll go into right now. So as, as an engineer, so what's a what are your typical parading opportunities for you as, as an engineer right now? Um, you know, do you parade every Tuesday? Do you do weekends? What sort of thing is, is your unit doing at the moment? Yeah, of course. So that, that's actually a quite exciting uh, question because as of late, we always... Uh, if you speak to very old old year reservists, I'm talking about 10, 10 plus years, they they will tell you times where it's been amazing. They'll tell 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 you times where it's been absolutely shocking. So you go out on an exercise and you get no rounds, you get no bullets, you get no blanks. You have to actually shout out bang bang or buckets of bullets, <laughs> which is insane. But there are, have been times like that. However, we are now ramping up back to war fighting because you know what, what what's happened in the last two two years we have covid we have the bushfires we have floods we have everything which has disrupted uh the way that we actually conduct business in the rick uh in 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 the reserve land but also full-time as well uh and and with the collapse of uh, of of afghanistan so what we're doing this year and, and i'm really glad that i've actually came back to uh, the engineers this year is because we're now starting up these warfighting capabilities. So uh, the first half of the year for for uh, for for where I am, uh, we have had a culminating exercise where we build up towards this massive thing that's actually happening this weekend. Uh, so we first do shooting, for example. We then hone the uh, do doing live shoots and honing that particular 
equipment, be, being re familiar on our IMTs or infantry mine, mine and tactics, how to integrate in, into sections and actually seek out and destroy the enemy. And the last bit is the demolitions part, which is the, 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 the reason why engineers are chosen is because we do dems we do big bang things and it's amazing uh, and then we have the culminator which is a combined arms live breach which is occurring this saturday uh, so what that is essentially is you have an obstacle and you have a full combat team a full call sign this may be including cav uh the uh the infantry you could have uh the, uh, the artillery as well and the engineers and we seek out the enemy, we then encounter an obstacle, and then a call is being made to breach the obstacle, uh, which is a very complex tool. Uh, so it's an amalgamation and a unison of, of support by fire by the cab, lay, lay, laying down fire across. It's the infantry providing security, it's, it's the artillery fire firing guns towards the, end, the enemy and firing smoke for obscuration. And then it's the engineers doing that run to the actual front lines, placing the explosives, running back, which is all under fire, and then actually reducing the obstacle and fighting through. Uh, sounds exciting, right? That's, that's what we're doing now. Uh, we, 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 are, we understand that we've been chainsaws and, and boats and, and, and uh, hold, holding bags and escorting people through hospitals uh, for the last two, two years. We're, we are back to grassroots now. We, we are actually practicing things for, for, for war fighting and rebuilding that capability again. Yeah. So it's a great time to join at the moment, uh, especially as a reservist, uh, but also in general as well, the opportunities are big, so. Yeah, yeah, right out. Yeah, because he's uh, getting all that actual hands-on life experience with the with all the natural disasters and, and all that other sort of crap going on. So yeah, Army's moving with it. And obviously we need to go into that other sort of um, training. Yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely. Cool. And and of course, we we still support the Australian uh, P peoples because we are our, our, our defence force. So when the floods occurred uh, within seventy two hours, no twenty four, we had a section or plus moved with truck, with boats, with everything, ready to assist to be airlifted to to Lismore and Coffs Harbour to assist with that. So, look, you your your position within the reserves, especially, is is broad. You will do support, you will do war, war firefighting, but you also do stuff that protects and enables the Australian public as well. This is why people love us. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. These are always the ones up the front getting all the bloody mechanics. We're sitting in the workshop fixing all the shit <laughs> exactly the right. and, and everything. We don't get nothing. No recognition. Do the photo up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, um, one thing I, I'd like to know is, yeah, like a typical day in the barracks for you. So, um, obviously, I know it's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> I, I get this question all the time and I know how hard it is, but for a mechanic, for me, you know, PT, we're in yeah. a workshop doing uh, like workshop stuff. What sort of stuff do you do throughout the day? Like if you haven't got any exercise, you haven't got any any sort of stuff going on in the background, what sort of things do engineers do? Well, that's, that's an interesting question because it really depends on on the staff and, and the caliber and also the, your tempo as well. Yeah. Uh, so we actually don't do PT uh, during reserve time. I, I have a big thing where we don't do PT because that's where we do war fighting. It's expected for reservists to maintain their fitness outside. And this is why we get 600 bucks every year to actually maintain that. It's the health declaration bonus. And all you have to do is parade 20 days a year and uh, be qualified and you get 600 bucks tax-free uh, to, to do anything. And I expect that to be, you know, health insurance, going to the gym, buying protein, whatever, right? To enable you to do that. Because yeah. those three hours, you know, uh, are very crit critical because look, by the time we start, the boss is ha having a chat. The training way wants, wants to have a yarn as well. It is, it is in like, you waste a lot of time with the governance of things. But yeah. when we actually break through that, um, some 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 of the things that I've I've been doing is getting back to the grassroots. So it's not going to be death by PowerPoint. It's not going to be sitting in a cl classroom. It is actually physically going out in the field. Right? Tell me and show show me how do we assault this peer position? Tell me what is the composition of this explosive here, or how can you identify? So depending on the staff that you actually have and what you are readying to, will determine what training you actually have. Because Tuesday nights and a couple of weekends is all we have before we actually execute something massive like 
combined arms live bridge, for example. Uh, so uh, for me, because I am very enthusiastic and I'm a first year sergeant, uh, we get to do all of the tiring stuff and the exhaustive stuff, but it's also the sexy stuff that, that we join for, you know, uh, things that you won't ever do outside unless you want to go fight in Ukraine, you know, uh, which is kind of spicy at the moment, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 And, and that's right. It's, it, it's exactly why people join. Like I, I'm on the phone with hundreds of people through the, through the months. And um, yeah, and that's one of the things that people always say is they, you know, they want to do something different, get out, be active, you know, do it, do all that sort of stuff. So you, yeah. you're definitely right. And, and that's both with reserve and, and full time. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So um, IETs for, for reserve engineer, how does that work? And what do you, what do you have to do? Yeah, it's a great question. So we, uh, so I, IIT is for in engineers. The first man mandatory one before you graduate from from the RIC is called uh, the Combat Arms Module, and what that is 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 essentially learning all the section weapons. So when you go through, you'll learn. ACP or the Army Combative Pro Program to level two. So you will be able to defend yourself or at least uh, to, to delay you being absolutely whomped by a, an adversary before your mate comes and helps you. You'll be uh, taught on the, the different positions or with the minimize. So the 556 uh, light, light machine gun and also using the uh, MAG 558, which is the 762 general purpose machine gun. Also, 66 rocket launches and 84 Carl Gugustoff recorders, rifles, and everything. So, uh, to, to, to tie it off, it is something uh, that all soul soldiers should, should know, and that is knowing the arsenal that we actually have and that's available to your section. Uh, the combat, uh, sorry, the combat engineer specific stuff is the phase one and phase two, which is phase one is how to actually be a field en engineer, how to use a chainsaw, saws tools and the specialist tools such as uh the hydraulic packs and all the things that 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 we need to know to do uh building searches or do uh i guess construction i guess yeah. phase two is where you actually start to really do the, the the cool stuff which is search uh explosives and all of that stuff as well uh, and also explosive hazard reduction. This is where you start to identify the in-service explosives, get to use them as well and see them in action, feel the effects of it. Uh, so one of my combat engineers has just come back from phase two and uh, she was very fortunate for her course to be, uh, to be attended by a few people from the special operations uh, engineering group. And what they do is they basically are the SF of the engineers and they get to play with very cool stuff that we will never see ever again so i reminded her that everything that she saw and touched she will never probably touch it again unless she has mates in there um so they so the rapid uh change and how we uh train in engineers now is post afghanistan so if we think back to afghanistan and, and iraq it's ieds it's asymmetrical non-conventional warfare it is things that we're not used to yeah. so all of the doctrine the things that we teach from the 80s is gone now yeah. all right so we now teach these small things and the ability for a sapper which is a private uh, a, engineer to do things has risen immensely so yeah. i can order a sapper or a private with explosives to go out and reduce an explosive ordinance if i feel that they are capable of doing it back a couple of years five five years ago we would need to call over through through the net to the command to get an eod team uh, explosive or ordnance disposal team to then assess go down blow in place and move which takes time and space yeah. from the mission. But now we can task regular soldiers in the engineer corps to go down and actually deal with it. So yeah. the space is now changed and shifted so much. And uh, yeah, the freedom of, of, of action that, that we can do is amazing now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Things are sort of catching up and not mm -hmm. only um, like SOP side of things, but I was talking to someone about this before and it was... I get out when all the good stuff comes in. So, <laughs> it's always yeah, the case, isn't it? We were working with the most outdated shit ever, and, but and now everything's been completely swapped out. I, I got to play with some of the stuff, but yeah, it's uh, it's completely different now. 
Absolutely. No, it's, it's so changed. For those that don't know what we will just talk, like IETs as well. I know we, we will probably be rattling off a whole heap of acronyms and whatnot. You probably have no idea what we're talking about, but IETs is initial employment training. So you do Kapuka and then you've got your actual employment training to, that you have to do before you're qualified in your job specific role. So you'll go into a proficient uh, private I don't know, SAPA, craftsman, whatever it is that you're going into. So it's, you know, working on things, learning things that you need to know for that very base knowledge in your actual job. Um, there was something, or, oh yeah. So do you have any sort of specialist streams that you guys are, that you can go into or is yeah. it everyone just qualified in the same sort of stuff? So as a reserves, we we uh, we 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 push P people to uh, a CE or an FE, which is a field or a combat in engineer, and you learn tools, explosive search, the, the basic stuff. You can all also come in as a, a planty, so you can actually do construction. So combat engineers are one phase, right, and then a construction in engineer is a, di a different one. So you can uh, be a driver, or you can actually operate big plant uh, and an armored plant so you know that those big cap excavators that you see on construction sites there are armored versions and camouflage ver version of that to assist with with uh, with operations within the ai or the uh, area of of operations uh, and and their role is to support the counter mobility and the mobility of a site or an operation so they build things such as protective measures like tr trenches for for inf infantry and us they uh they 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 can reduce obstacles as well if the threat is gone uh so there, there's a bit there's a it's a bit of a uh i guess a, a choice similar to in infantry where you can be a rifleman or you can be uh in support so support you would do dfsw which is like your heavy weapons or you'd be a rifleman in a platoon being part part, part of a section so we do have that stream like that and it's pretty cool um i would suggest everyone to go as a combat engineer first and when your knees and your back start to fail then change to 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 uh to uh apply because you know they 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 sit behind the lines and they have fridges in 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 their trucks and they have these snacks and everything it's just pretty loose whilst i freeze in the front line so yeah funny you say that because yeah i was posted to 17 construction <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what's about mate. yeah yeah really out to yes and having a bit of fun and you guys uh yeah everyone else is just you know living in the, under their hoochies and everything and oh. we got big tents and bulldoze out some some like nice areas for beds and <laughs> yep it's, uh, living the life and it's always about yeah. who uh, who you know so yeah absolutely good fun all right, so last question from me, uh, so I don't take up all the time. Uh, so you guys, um, if you got any questions, like if something's popping into your head, just in the chat, just put a one, you don't have to write your whole question out. And then that way I'll, I'll just come to you um, and let you answer your, uh, ask a question. So yeah, my last one, um, yeah, what, because you're a part of the RIC and obviously see a lot of people going through there, you know, what's the, your biggest like, thing that people need to improve like what do you what do you think is you know, yeah. something your advice on someone that's trying to you know go through at the moment absolutely no that's a good question and just before i i, I say the and the answer this is not uh sponsored this is not told it's not shaped <laughs> in any way shape or form like seriously you can slip into 50 later later mate it's all good but uh it is 1000 percent fitness all right i i i can't stress that enough all right uh the the greatest change in the reserves but all, also in in, in full-time as well is the the disparity between combat core and and non-combat core now so for those who actually don't know especially with army for uh for a, a female to join the army it is 45 sit-ups eight push-ups and a beat test of 7.5 for males it's it's the same thing right However, if you are not combat core, so you are a clerk, a QE, a, wear, a warehouse, a cook, your, your requirements are as a female is four push-ups, 20 sit-ups and 6.1 on the beep test. For a male, it's eight push-ups, 20 sit-ups and 6.1 on the beep test. There, I, I, I don't care who you are uh, or, or, um, or, or, who, or who you associate with. 
uh, fitness is is number one because this is exactly this is what you sign sign up for, and this is I guess a, a very very uh, blunt piece of advice or a statement. Your your first role as a soldier is to pick up a rifle and shoot someone in the face, right? That is first and foremost. If you if someone is is charging at your position and if you're a clerk or a, a cook, you I expect you as a sergeant, as as a person that is next to you in a a, a, a trench, to pick up that rubber rifle and destroy the enemy. Uh, and people get a bit flustered about that. Oh no, I joined as a, a clerk or a, a cook. No, no, no. You you join the army. You get trained on a, a rifle uh, that is has the ability to touch people at six hundred meters, and you only have to shoot five uh, a grouping of two hundred mil which is around 20 centimeters at 100 meters. Anyone can, you can do that. However, the fitness part, part of it is not only just to actually get in. It is 100% linked to your physical and your, your, your mental and also your, your spiritual mind as well, okay? When you're fit, you feel better. You feel stronger. You can conquer the world. And that is the, the, the emotion that we need to emulate when you go through basic training, through, through exercises or operations. When, you, when it's raining and the trenches are filling up with water because someone didn't dig, dig, the, the, dig the, the drainage or it's just, dare I say, high range. Um, it, <laughs> you need that, that physical prowess and you need that mental stability and that resilience that's only founded by hard work in fitness to get you through. And this is not just our army as well. This is every single service. If you're on a ship, guess what? You're going to go up and down those decks all the time. In, 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 the, air, in, in the Air Force, you'll, you'll be going up and down stairs to your five-star hotels. It is, it is going to happen, right? <laughs> so, but... But seriously, for Air, Air Force, if, if you're joining as a PTI or, uh, or an AGI, you need to keep up to the infantry standard. So just to, 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 to end my rant, like listen to what Brody has to offer and it's holistic. It is, it is not just to get strong. It's not just to get good at one thing. It is a whole body experience. And because you're in the military, you are expected to be a cut above everyone else in civilian land. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. And you definitely put that a lot better than, than I can. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, and that's, that's a big thing is, yeah, a lot of people see going in as a clerk. You, d- you don't need to be at, a, at a, you know, a decent level. But listen to the people that have been there. You do. Like it's, it, there's yeah. not really that much difference when you go out the field, out field and you're doing a whole heap of shit. You're still carrying stuff. You're still walking around and like I said, it's the holistic side of things as well. You know, you'll perform better. You'll be able to make better decisions under under stress, uh, under um, fatigue, all that sort of stuff. So it's it's not just about being able to squat the most in the gym. It's uh, yeah, there's a whole a whole lot more to it. One 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 hundred percent. And you know what? When when you join and when you get enlisted and 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 you're signing your name on your book or your enlistment pay paper, that PFA it's gone. All right. Yeah. PFA doesn't exist anymore. Then you get to the BFA. And the BFA doesn't deviate from combat core or non-combat core, all right? It is, so the, P, the PFA is that, that carrot, that, that easy benchmark. But when you get to the BFA, they don't discriminate against combat core or non-combat core. On top of the B, the BFA or the, or the basic fitness assessment, I'm sure you've spoken about it already, it's the PESA. Mm. PESA is, 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 the, is, is another assessment that is required to actually test you. And depending on what core you are or what your operational requirements are, if you are required to do a, a level four PESA, for example, you need to march uh, at, uh, with a 45 kilogram load in your time limit uh, and for 15 kilometers and your time limit is 150. You know, uh, for you need to lift a, a 40 kilogram box at a height of 1.5 meters. You know, so there, there's massive things that you have to actually think about when you're joining your, your, the military because it's not just I got in, hooray. It is there is a continual uh, effort and continual improvement that's required because you're going to get older, you're going to get injured, like mm-hmm. no doubt about it. All right, it's <laughs> that physical conditioning that you have to do yourself early on to bolster your mind, your body, uh, to make to make your military career as fun as possible. All right, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Awesome. All right. So let's see if we've got any questions in here. So 
V, do you want to just jump on if you're still a part of us? Just jump on and sort of clarify what you're asking there. The yeah, and and if you don't want it, it's, it's, it's all good. Look, it's uh when when you when you join the army, you will you will go through a use session, which is a assessment test of what jobs are open to you, and then you'll you'll you basically choose from a menu of of amazing roles. I should be paid by D DFR <laughs> roles that are open to you because depending on the results set of your U test, which is basically a very low down I and IQ test will open up roles to, to you. If you are smart enough, you you open up all roles, okay? Uh, platoon, squadron, you unit, don't worry about that until you actually get past Kapuka, get, get past your initial training. Uh, if you're full-time, you don't know that until at the very, very end. Um, so it really depends on, uh, on demand. For example, when Afghanistan dried up and, uh, and I was at uh, the School of Military in Engineering in Holsworthy, 95% uh, of, the, of the trainees there went to Darwin. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because everyone just left because uh, the, the, the retention was low. Uh, and and they that they sought out that there there was no trips left so there was a massive deficiency there yeah. so ninety five percent of people had to be posted to Darwin so if you're full time it really depends on the demand of the units or the actual core itself well, that's yeah. a good question yeah or your career as well that can have a, like depending on what stage you're at with your career that can play a role too yep yeah. um all right awesome Josh jump on I know you're there you were talking before. <laughs> Jump on and ask your question, mate. Just unmute yourself. You, I'm pretty sure oh, you might be on your phone, but if you're on a laptop, I can't even see. Hey, you. guys. Hey, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Very good night. Yeah. Just go ahead and um, answer, uh, ask your question. I took a lot in and I uh, got a lot of um, the Sarge there and you in particular, Brody. I've been following you for a while and you've been motivating me a lot and it's been helping me get over the cross the line and yeah, interact with my peers and that. Um, my only question I had was if I was to go to Kapuka and get through my IETs and whatnot, could I just pick to go up to Townsville or Which, what would happen? Uh, like, are you full time and what, what core are you going to? What, what I want to go to infantry, combat engineer or artillery. Um, I'm, a, I'm only an army candidate at the moment i still got a bit of a process to go through yep um but i was wondering like if i could get through it or like kapuka phase and yep. um would i be able to go where i want to go or would they just say oh like this is where you got to go it's what? like a bid right it's like a bid <laughs> and look to, to be completely lose. honest <laughs> as well if your instructors don't like you they will send you to the shithole yeah <laughs> um, and you I'm just say yes yeah uh, but if you're infantry, the one thing that I would get you to do is do your own research on where the actual barracks are. So you, there's only a handful of places where, where, where you're going to go and yeah. then just have a talk, talk to some, some people who, who have, have actually been there. Um, sure. For engineers, you only have a few places. You have Darwin, you have Brisbane, and then you have... Darwin um, would be hectic. Oh, really? See you later. It's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of an anniversary at the moment. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Darwin, uh, Town Townsville or uh, Brisbane. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, just do some read some research about it because when you sign dot line and, 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 and uh, you're, you're on your way, uh, you yeah. have no choice whatsoever. So at, at Kapuga, so once nice, you sign, nice. you'll yep. just head straight to your IETs. You may be held for a, a couple of weeks. At Kapuka, yeah. you're doing a few crap jobs, but then you'll go straight to, uh, if you're infantry, you go straight to uh, the School of Cool, yeah. um, called Singleton, uh, or um, or Holsworthy for uh, for engineers. Is Holsworthy 2nd Commando Regiment? Uh, look, <laughs> Brody, it's for it, it's SF base with some attachments around there. Uh, the School of Military Engineering is there. Uh, we had our own slice of power, paradise across the road, but that got take, taken away from us. Uh, so yeah, oh. it, it's really SF based, but there's a lot of uh, reserve things there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. Thank you very much, man. And thank you, Brody. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I, was, I managed to spend about eight years. I think it was in Holsworthy. Five seasons. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever do service with Kaz, Dean Caswell? <laughs> nah. 
No, I don't think so. What's he do? I have not. What's he do? <laughs> he's in the uh, army. <laughs> he was a sergeant as well. Yeah. Uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't help me. <laughs> yeah, <there's a> <laughs> heaps of them, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, right, guys. Awesome. Love you heaps. I'll talk to you soon. No worries. Cheers, mate. Just Cheers. mute yourself if you can. Yep. So a lot of things up here. Um, all right. So we got another one. Oh, we got a couple up here. So Debu, you got there. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Yeah, hi Brody. So uh, just wanted to check, uh, how do I find out the reserve roles? So uh, I've gone through the aptitude and it's all good. So I am looking for a specific role and uh, you know, there are some uh, conditions associated with the reserve role in the sense that you should not be traveling, you should not be staying two and a half hours, you know, away from your base location. So how do you find out that, you know, if I am in this postcode, which are the roles I can apply for? Yeah, that, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't travel two and a half hours. That's just ridiculous. Uh, so are you, so you can ask whereabouts do you live? Uh, don't tell me exactly the street address. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I stay near uh, Manning, uh, you know, Manning Bay, uh, Foster, Tari, Oh, Foster Tankari. Yeah. yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. Um, damn. Yeah, is that the right for me? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a good question. You will need to uh, so call DFR because they they will definitely know what the demand is in the area. Uh, right. Being a pretty big, big country town, uh, mm. I would assume that uh, yeah, there there would be at least cab or inventory, but it also okay. depends on what you want to do as well. So call your local de defense force recruiting uh okay. and uh and just see hey I'm, I'm i live here uh what are what are the jobs that are open first and then where are the depot lo lo locations look uh if if you're look in in metropolitan if you're traveling more than an hour uh that's too far because you you complete your parade nights at 10 o'clock at night by the time you get home it'll be 11 uh and then you'll be like you know what i don't feel like doing reserves anymore uh, yeah. Unless you're 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 dead you're you're dedicated or institutionalized like me, uh, so yeah, just make your choice there, okay? Right. So uh, uh, you know, if you are specifically, oh, I have I had gone to the uh, the sessions conducted, and then they there I got a feeling that if you are looking for specific uh, officer roles in and around Sydney, you know, the wait time is eighteen months, so. Do you have some information around that? If so, what yeah. the information I got, uh, they told me was that if you're re really looking for this role, then go over, go over to Brisbane. So uh, how, that's, you know, yeah. that doesn't right. sound that doesn't sound 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 right 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 as all. So the eighteen months is synonymous with the if you want to become an officer, the actual training time on average is around eighteen months. I don't think the wait time is that long. We, we are bleeding, we, we don't have enough officers as we speak, especially your junior ones. Uh, so I, I don't think that's actually correct. Uh, so give, give them a call call again. Just remember when you're becoming an officer as well, because I have some experience with that. That's a very dark story for a beer time, Brody. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, officers. It's, uh, it, it takes time, but it also, it, it relies on your ability to become like to show that you're already a leader, a manager, or have the aspects to become one or be shaped by by one as well. Uh, so if you do team team sports, if, if you uh, manage a team for work, things like that, that plays in into it. But also you got to remember as well, officers they lead from the front. They should anyway, uh, especially my my uh, le left hand tenant. I push him to be at the front and be bit better than everyone because to lead by example he hates me for it but you know what stuff that uh but uh yeah the expectation and the performance that is required from me is a lot higher and a lot more uh i guess uh yeah greater as well yeah yeah for sure but but, but this information is not available anywhere on the website i'll have to call them that i so i am in this postcode and then what are the uh roles available Yep. That is not there, right? So 
you know, is, is for, for, you know, I have given the aptitude test and it went well. The yeah. next step is to find a role or first clear the physicals and other things. No, so uh, so once you do the U test, your your case advisor should have call called you. You should have uh, e indicated three opportunities that that you want to pursue. They will see that you've you've qualified for the for the U test, and then they'll book an in an interview with you. If you want to do an officer role, there is an interview, and then you have to sit what we call an an OSB or an officer OSB. selection board. Yeah. Okay, so so it's only after OSB that you prepare for physical, and then you start looking for roles so always be always be the first step right? so so as an officer you actually don't get to choose a role until they have assessed you uh because okay. there is a very competitive edge to especially towards the infantry and and combat and engineers so they'll assess your suitability and also your criteria as well because if you're not car cut out to be an infantier uh then they won't offer that to you because it's extremely competitive all right then. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Gordy. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's that's some good info there for people that are going for officers. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just finish off with uh, one more question here that I got in the comments before. So, um, yeah, it's a real simple one. What's the difference between active reserve and standby reserve? Oh, cool. That's a good question. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's actually very administrative. So what happens is when you're in active reserve, you're what we call a service cap five. So you parade uh, with with your unit and and you you attribute twenty days minimum per year to to service. When you go stand standby, it means that you have been uh, you have completed at least your your initial employment uh, or your first phase of that, and then you have decided that you can't commit to the twenty days. So then what you do is you put in the application to change yourself to a service cap two or standby reserve. What standby reserve means is you don't need to parade. You only need to parade once as a, as a checkup per year. However, if the governor general decides to call you out or reserves out, you must answer the call and you have to actually oblige. Uh, however, when, when you are ready to come back, then you start parading again by, by transferring to, to circuit cap five. A lot of people do do this, especially in, in reserves, because they, they want to pump their, their, their CB career. They, they can't commit to, to, uh, to 20 day, days a year, which is pretty pretty easy, by the way. Yeah. Um, last year, I did 150 on top of a, a, a full-time job uh, just because I didn't get any sleep. And I love what I do. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty messed up. But uh, yeah, uh, that's that's the difference between the two. It's available there for retention because before that didn't exist and you just get left behind, you get forgotten and then you get automatically discharged by some clerk that just thinks they're doing the right thing. And then you, you'll find that you're out of the army and you have to go through Kapuka again to actually get back in. So service cats are there or service ca categories to assist with that uh, transitional period in your life. Yeah, good. Yeah, and, and that's a uh, good point with the whole retention side of things. Yeah, if, if people can't make it, they uh, may, may just be for the year or whatever. At least you can just go for that standby and uh, and crack on later on. Yeah. The turn around it for you. Yeah, beautiful. Um, awesome. Well, we'll leave it at that. So we, we're not here talking all night. We've already been for just about an hour. I planned for half an hour and it, it always blows out, but it's always good chatting. Um, yeah, I love getting on here and just and chatting to the guys and yeah, seeing sort of learning more about your like other roles as well, because yeah. you know, I'm always stuck in my little bubble with the mechanic side of things. We're off um, with our GMVs and Cokes and uh, everything cooking in the back. <laughs> but uh yeah awesome so thanks heaps for turning up Ty. it's um yeah it's really good opportunity for people to learn from you because you yeah obviously in those really uh good roles to you know be able to put out some awesome advice for people um but yeah thanks again for for turning up uh do you have anything final to to sort of say to anyone uh just uh two things one of course just maintain and improve your fitness have gates and goals be disciplined as well because look uh you're not going to get pr 